Good evening, you're joining the State of Business on Art Television. I'm Nishani Pigera, and here are the stories that made headlines today. A team from Taiwan arrives in Sri Lanka to probe alleged transaction. And Sri Lanka and Iran to strengthen bilateral cooperation. In tonight's top story, a team of Taiwanese investigators, including a Taiwanese bank official, arrived in Sri Lanka last night to carry out an investigation on the alleged transferring of 1.1 million US dollars from the Far Eastern International Bank of Taiwan. On the same day, the Far Eastern Bank of Taiwan admitted that cyber criminals had planted malware on its computers and servers in order to gain access to its SWIFT terminal, which is used to transfer funds between financial institutions across the world. According to the Far Eastern Bank, the malware allowed the hackers to buy approximately 60 million US dollars from the accounts of the bank's clients to foreign destinations. The Criminal Investigation Department of the Sri Lankan police continued to work closely with its Taiwanese counterparts to track down the hackers who were said to have breached the Taiwanese bank's computers. On Saturday, the Far Eastern Bank said it had recovered most of the stolen money and that its losses would amount to no more than 500,000 US dollars. On Monday, 9th October, two arrests connected to the theft were made in Sri Lanka. One of them is Shalila Munasenha, the head of the state-run Litro Gas Company. He was arrested after police allegedly found 1.1 million US dollars of the Taiwanese funds in his personal bank account. Following the arrest of Shalila, Litro Gas Lanka Limited distanced itself from the scandal on Tuesday, saying it had no connection or knowledge of the alleged transaction. Accordingly, Shalila was removed as chairman of Litrogas Lanka Limited by the State Enterprise Development Ministry on Tuesday. Munasinghe, who was arrested by the Criminal Investigations Division of the police, was produced before the Colombo Fort Magistrate and remanded till October 25th. A discussion organized by the National Chamber of Commerce of Sri Lanka under the theme Bilateral Trade Between Sri Lanka and Iran was held in Colombo last evening. The Iranian ambassador to Sri Lanka, Mohammad Zairi Amirani, was the guest speaker at the event. Addressing the event, Zairi Amirani noted that issues pertaining to the bilateral relations between the two countries can be solved by avoiding negativity and short-sighted approaches. The Iranian ambassador to Sri Lanka was accompanied by the deputy ambassador of Iran, Mohammad Raza Ahmadi and Dr. Hossein, the commercial attaché of Embassy of Iran in New Delhi. The purpose of this session was to brief the business community on trade regulations, the items that are in demand for import and export and joint venture investment opportunities in Iran. While commencing banking transaction is crucial point to promotion of commercial relations. In the meantime, I want to emphasize on a sort of structure such as Iran Lanka business concept or another name. This is only the name. Iran Lanka Business Council. What is the duty of this council or another name? To project, monitor, and explore all activities and opportunities in both countries. The another thing which I want to emphasize on that this. I strongly believe that I strongly believe that we are cooperation with each other. We are able to make solution for all obstacles. Meanwhile, Dr. Hussein Bamari, commercial attaché of the Embassy of Iran in New Delhi, noted that banking relations between Sri Lanka and Iran would start by the end of this year or in the first quarter of next year through the euro system. He also emphasized the need to commence banking relations in order to further boost and trade investment ties between the two countries. Banking relation of Iran Sri Lanka, we can say we don't have. We don't have any relation, but it doesn't mean we cannot do business. We are also willing to develop the banking relation and hope till end of this year or maybe the start of the next year, this somehow this banking relation started. Hope we can start with Sri Lanka and uh, start our business in agriculture section and industry with the Sri Lanka. Even you can directly buy from Iran and export it to India. As I know, you had the tariff, preferential tariff agreement with India. 
So instead of India importing from Iran and export to you, you can import directly and we help you, you can export to India. Many, many petrochemical products. The State of Business will be back with more news after this short break. Do stay tuned. Welcome back. You're watching the State of Business. The National Occupational Safety and Health Conference for the year 2017 was held in Colombo recently. Minister of Labour, Trade Union Relations and Sabaragamo Development, WDJ Seniviratna was a chief guest at the occasion. The conference was organised by the National Institution of Occupation, Safety and Health in collaboration with the Ministry of Labour, Trade Union Relationship and Sabaragamo Development. This year, the conference was held under the theme Prevent All Occupational Injuries and Go Home Safely. The main aim of the conference is to promote total physical and emotional well-being among working Sri Lankans by providing information, training, solutions and management systems that ensure progressive safety and health in working environments. According to the global estimates published by the International Labour Organization, approximately 2.3 million deaths occur annually around the world due to occupational injuries. Now, we are discussing about the occupation of safety and health, which is fundamentally essential for the social and economic development of the country. Because we know where there is no safety, where there is frequent occurrence of accidents in workplaces or factories, there will be chaotic situation where the output will be affected. It is said that globally there is a loss of 4% of the GDP as a result of these diseases connected to work and also accidents. So this is a very conspicuous situation where we have to think of. And also the ILO had reported that annually there are about 2.3 million lives that are lost as a result of diseases connected to work and accidents. Out of the 2.3 million, I am told, nearly 2 million, they die owing to diseases in workplaces or connected to work. So this is an alarming situation which we can, which I believe can be reduced if all parties concerned take an interest and take necessary steps and take all the precautions that are necessary to combat the situation. Trading at the Kalamu Stock Exchange ended on a positive note today. Let's look at the details after this break. Welcome back to the show. Trading at the Kalama Stock Exchange ended on a positive note today. The All Share Price Index gained 61.95 points to close at 6,621.56, and the SNPSL 20 Index gained 47.22 points to close the session at 3,917.64. Turnover was 1.4 billion rupees, and 37.6 million shares were traded. Up next are the day's forex rates. And that's all the news we have for you today. Do join us again tomorrow at the same time for the latest in business and financial news. Until then, thank you for watching. Have a pleasant evening.